everyone, it's Caitlin and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to be critiquing some of your food photos. I asked you guys on Instagram uh, if you would be interested and a lot of you seemed like you wanted me to critique your work. Um, so I did a little poll on there. A few of you guys submitted your photos. Unfortunately, I'm not going to get to get to them all today, but if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up and leave a comment down below letting me know you liked it and I can film more in the future. So from those photos, I picked 20 different photos from you guys that I am going to critique. And yeah, I wanna keep this intro pretty short and sweet because I feel like the video itself is going to be long. But before I get into the actual photos, I do want to give a brief disclaimer. Obviously, I am a self-taught photographer. I do know a decent amount of things about photography and have a certain style. But that being said, everyone has their own style of food photography and at the end of the day, if you're happy with your photo, there really is no wrong way to take a photo. So I'm just going to be giving my personal opinion on these photos. Some of them are amazing, and I'm just going to be super nitpicky in order to give some constructive criticism at all. Other ones are a little bit more easy to critique, but that doesn't mean they're bad. It just means that we're going to be revisiting some basic uh, foundational principles of photography and helping you improve your photos. So if you guys are interested in improving your own food photography, stay tuned because you can easily apply these to your own photos as well. Also, I posted a YouTube video on some basic photography principles um, a while ago describing light, the way you arrange things in a scene using the rule of thirds and stuff like that. So if all that sounds totally foreign to you, I'm going to link it here so you can go ahead and check it out. But when I critique these photos, I'm going to assume that you have some basic knowledge of photography and composition to start with. So I have my computer right here with all the photos on it, but I will also put them on the screen for you guys to follow along with and let's get straight into it. Honestly, we're starting out pretty strong here. This is a really, really good photo. I feel like I could just grab a muffin off of the top of that stack and eat it right now. I think the highlights and shadows are captured really well. There's nice contrast in the photo. The white balance is very accurate. The hues are not overly blue or overly yellow. Um, and it uses the rule of thirds really nicely. So the center focus of the photo is over on the right third of the screen if you were looking at the photo. Overall, really, really good job. The only thing, again, I'm being super nitpicky here, but if you look closely, you can see that the lemon, I'm assuming these are lemon poppy seed muffins, um, the lemon looks a little dry. The one that you use for garnish, it looks like it's kind of been sitting in the fridge for a few days or maybe you squeezed it and there's a lot of seeds in it. And generally in food photography, you want your food to look as perfect as possible. So if I were shooting these muffins, I probably would have replaced it with a fresh lemon and if possible, remove the seeds. Up next, we have some sort of a burrito bowl here. Um, overall, I like how you can see different elements from the bowl around the photo that does help to bring more life to the photo. But I would say the placement of the items around doesn't really add anything to the bowl. So when you place an item like a fork or a piece of cilantro or something, it will create a line. And generally speaking, you want those lines to go towards the center of your subject so the viewer's eyes will travel towards there. So as you can see in this photo, the cilantro is actually the way it's angled. It's sort of leading away from the bowl um, when your eyes naturally follow it. And the tomato isn't really adding anything either the way it's sliced. The angle of the shot is taken pretty well. Um, it doesn't appear to be completely level though or straight on an even plane. When I was editing it, I would probably straighten it out just a little bit. Next we have a flat lay over what appears to be some sort of baked oatmeal. It looks really, really good. I liked the color processing that they did. This isn't natural colors. There are definitely some hue play going on here, but I think it works really well. The highlights are almost a little blown out, I would say. There's not much definition between the edge of the bowl and the white background on the left side. So I would maybe try to add a little bit more definition or bring some shadow back into that area specifically. Um, but your overhaul angle is good. It could be straightened out a little bit. And two minor, minor things is that if I was doing this for my blog post or something, I wouldn't necessarily want the spice label or the brand that I was using in the photo unless it was a sponsored post. I would probably remove that or transfer the cinnamon or spice into another container. And I can also see your reflection in the spoon. That's something that's really hard. I still struggle with this too, but when you're shooting with reflective things, I can I can see, I think your arms, or actually I think you took the, the photo like this with your hands like this. I think I could see your body like that, which is totally fine. You can actually edit that out. Um, in Photoshop, uh, but just keep that in mind in the future. So I tried to group all these photos by theme, so I'm kind of going with the theme of composition here. So this photo, we have three pieces of really yummy looking cake, but everything in terms of spread seems kind of very condensed and 
pushed together and it also seems very far away. Like if I was taking a photo of these, I would probably want the cake to be closer to me. And if I was putting items in the background, I'd want them to be further away and almost blurred out. And you achieve that by using a lower aperture. And if you're not familiar with shooting your camera in manual, um, it's just how wide the photo is. It's when you take a photo of someone and their face is in focus, but the background is super blurry. That would be shot with a wider aperture. Props you use are relevant to the scene, but I would say they're a little cluttered. And also the brick wall is really pretty in the background, but I don't think it's really adding anything to the photo. If anything, it's sort of distracting my eyes from the cake. And I assume that we want the cake to be the star of the show here. So I would either bring the cake further away from the wall, blur out the background using wider aperture, like I said, um, or switch to a more simple background. Here's an example of good placement, I would say. This is a really good photo. So the focus of this photo is this glass of what appears to be some overnight oats or a parfait of some sort. And we have items in the foreground in front of it. We also have the item itself and then we have items in the background and they're all spread out pretty well so we don't have any strange areas of negative space. I would say that the green apple, though there might be apple in the parfait, it's kind of distracting me from the parfait because it's a lot brighter than all of the other elements in the photograph itself. So it kind of takes the attention away from our main focus point. And also, I think I would have liked this to be just a little bit more zoomed out. So the image itself, it's more on the left third of the screen, but it's almost a little bit too far over and in the lower corner. I probably would have wanted to bring it a little bit back towards the center, but again, this is me being super picky. Up next, we have a really yummy looking vegan bowl. These are all over Instagram, and I would say this one looks really good. Um, I'm not sure if you took this with your iPhone or a DSLR camera. I would just critique you in your editing process. Um, the, I can tell that you use the clarity setting or you made the image look sharper almost to the point where it looks a little bit too sharp and is starting to look like you're getting some very strong lines that someone wouldn't see in everyday life. So I would say maybe reduce that just a tiny, tiny bit. And then just personal preference again, if you want to go for that sort of green hue, like with the avocado and the edamame, it's probably a filter you used, but I would probably try to make the avocado look a little more of a blue based green than the yellow based green that it is now, just because it's starting to look like it might be a little bit off, but I do like how the background is more simple. Sometimes I see the bowl photos and there's a lot going on in the background it distracts from the bowl itself and the food looks really good too. So next up we have some yummy looking cookies and I like the lighting in this photo. I like the way you edited the photo. I definitely like the colors of it. However, I would say that this photo doesn't really follow the rule of thirds well. You want your focal points to intersect at those lines. However, in this photo, it seems that at all of those intersections, there's negative space where maybe in the future, if you're taking this photo, you'd want to put an actual cookie there. And I like how you incorporated a human element with your hand in the photo, but I probably would have brought it more into the photo because right now it's sort of in the corner of the photo and my eyes are drawn there, but then my eyes aren't really looking at the rest of the photo. This next photo, I think the hand is placed really well. Um, it's in the photo enough, but it's not covering the whole screen. And these cookies look really yummy too. I like how we have some ingredients from the cookies lying around. You have a repeating theme of circles because the cookies are circles and the plate has a bunch of circles on it and like the spoon nestles the plate really well with the thing I was talking about earlier with lines. Um, your eyes are drawn to the center of the cookies. The one thing I would say is that everything is in focus in this photo, which is totally a photo style that is okay. Um, but if I really wanted to draw attention to the cookies, I would probably shoot with a wider aperture. So maybe just the hand holding the cookie was in focus and everything else was slightly in the background. That would draw more focus to one specific area of the photo because right now everything is in focus and my eyes are kind of looking at the photo in total instead of one specific area. This is a fantastic photo. I wanted to include this photo because it is absolutely gorgeous. It has a lot of the elements I was talking about earlier. We have some foreground elements going on. We have some background. There's a nice blur. Your focus goes straight to the hand, pouring the milk into the granola, the blueberries. It looks super delicious. The blueberries have a nice glisten to them. They look nice and fresh. I like the color and styling you did. This is a darker, more moody photo, but I like the use of shadows and highlights. And also, if you look at the two spoons in this photo, what I was saying earlier, when you do do lines, you want your lines to sort of lead to the subject. But if you're doing multiple lines, you also want to create them in 90 degree angles. It just looks visually more appealing. And as you can see, if you brought those two spoons together in the photo like this, it would create a 90 degree angle. Being incredibly nitpicky here, there is a tiny, tiny bit of almond milk or whatever non-dairy milk 
on your glass by the hand, there's like a tiny little white spot. It is so small, it really doesn't matter. But that is something that you could easily edit out in Lightroom or Photoshop. And I think if the person who took this photo probably used that to edit this photo to begin with, like honestly, this photo would be perfect. Here's another example of a hand shot in the photo. I really like this photo, only the top of the mug is in focus and the rest has a soft blur so your eyes are drawn straight there i really like the white balance and the colors i think the blue adds a nice pop of color without distracting from the main subject i also like the human element of the hand but generally when we take a photo you would want to take the photo from the perspective as if the viewer was looking straight down on it and they could grab it so that being said i think the left hand grabbing the mug is kind of an awkward placement because i'll flip the photo because if the viewer was actually looking at the photo, they'd be grabbing the mug like this, if that makes sense. So because the handle's on the right, I probably would have grabbed it on my right hand um, because that way my fingers would also curl more naturally around the mug. That one finger extending straight, it doesn't look awkward, but it doesn't look completely natural either. Okay, next up we're going to talk about lighting some. So this is a really nice photo. It's more of a minimalistic style, which I don't mind. Um, I think the bowls look really yummy. They are nicely arranged. I like the filter that was used on this photo. Um, there's definitely some color play going on and I like the symmetry of the bowls. I would just say overall, the photo is a little bit underexposed. The shadows are a little bit too dark. If you raise the exposure a little, you'd probably get more detail in the cherries and they would look even more delicious. And I really think you could make the almonds pop if you just raise the exposure a tiny, tiny bit more. Here's another photo of some yummy looking pancakes. I would say that this is a great start. Obviously you put a lot of effort into your food, but your lighting is a little odd and it kind of looks like you shot this in your kitchen hallway. So we have these two like lines in the background of the photo. If you have the opportunity, I would go straight up to your window and shoot against like a completely plain surface. It would make your food stand out a lot more. And I think it looks like your light is coming from the left side of the photo because there's a really big shadow on the right side of the photo and it's not really lighting the surface well. This I would say, I think you're a little bit too far away from the light source because it just seems to be some, some funky lighting going on. Here's another photo of some smoothie bowls, it looks like. I like the styling of the bowls themselves. I like how you alternated where the toppings are on this side and this side. It fills out the photo really nice. The lighting in this photo is a little bit harsh, so your shadows have really, really sharp lines, and that is a style in and of itself. Um, but generally, with food photos, you people tend to shy away from that, but again, that's a style thing. If you like it, keep doing it. I would say your highlights might be a little bit overexposed. The white bowl seems to kind of lose some detail there because there's a lot of light going on. And your background is a little busy. I like the leaves and I think it complements the colors of the bowls well. However, there's a lot going on and my eyes kind of go straight to the leaves instead of the smoothie bowls themselves. And then being nitpicky, you did put a leaf in the bowl. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, but I think most people wouldn't be putting leaves in their smoothie bowls. We have another yummy looking Buddha bowl here. Um, overall, I think the photo looks a tiny bit cramped. I maybe would have shifted that tray of the falafel a little bit further away and like the lettuce. And I personally don't really like when things overlap, like your bowl of roasted veggies overlapping in the bottom left corner. Um, it's not really my personal style. I know some people do it. It's just what you find visually appealing. But your light in this photo, I can tell it's coming from the upper right corner, which is a good start, but it looks really, really harsh. Your shadows are very, very dark and your highlights are actually blown out. So if you look at some parts of the lettuce on the right side, it's just like a white glow and we're losing all the detail there. So depending what you're shooting with, this almost kind of looks like an artificial light to me. Um, I would diffuse it. You can get a cheap diffuser online or even put like, um, a pillowcase or a thin white sheet on that helps the light create less harsh shadows. And here we have some delicious looking peanut butter cookies. This is again, a really good photo compositionally. I think it's very strong. There isn't a skew or anything. There's no distortion from the lens. Your angles look very straight and right. Nothing is overexposed either. I would say maybe it's a tiny bit underexposed. And then being nitpicky, this is a personal style. Your shadows are a little bit harsh i think they might be able to be diffused a little bit better like the shadows around your cookies that's totally personal preference i just like my food photos to be lighter honestly if i saw this photo on instagram i would think it was a great photo and i wouldn't be like 
have anything to say about it. So for these last three photos, we're going to talk about lines and drawing your eye into the photo. I've mentioned this a few times, but I thought this is a good progression of photos um, to show you guys. So this first photo, we have a yummy looking chocolate bread going on here, but I wouldn't really say that the lines in this photo are necessarily working for the subject matter. First off, we have like a really light white dish towel and a black, like a, I forget the name for it, oven mitt, um, underneath this plate. And I don't really think that's really adding anything to the photo. I probably would have just stuck to one or the other, not both, because there's such a big contrast between them. Also, I personally just hate square plates. I think they're really, really hard to style because you have those really sharp angles. And the piece of bread looks good, but as you can see, like the angles of the plate are kind of drawing your eyes away from it. And then the way the plate is hitting that container of banana bread isn't really visually appealing either. You do have good composition in terms of the bread being in the right third of the photo and the slice being on the left third. Um, but I think if you put it on a round plate and just use that white towel um, instead of the white and the black, it would be a much better flow photo and it would have a lot more flow to it. Here's another photo. And as you can see, the lines are working a little bit better in this photo. So you can see the bread in the upper left corner. It's sort of angled down. So your eyes travel more to the main focus of the screen, which I'm assuming here is that cashew cream cheese spread or the spread. Um, and I also like how you crop some of the things. So the bread isn't completely in the photo and the bowl of carrots isn't completely in the photo. It makes the spread appear larger when it gives the element that it's been sort of cropped off and it just makes it more visually appealing as well. I like the cashew spread, but I would say the angle of your fork, I would have drawn that angle down more like this, so it would be like the viewer could reach for it and scoop out the cheese themselves. And also it would just draw your eye instead of the angle sort of drawing your eye this way, it would draw your eye more towards the center of the photo where you do have the cashew spread. And I probably would have put it in a bigger bowl or maybe use a smaller cutting board for the bread because the bread is taking up the most visual weight in this photo, but I'm pretty sure the focus is on the spread. We have one more photo for this critique and this I think is really, really beautiful photo. I think it combines everything that I have been talking about. We have some delicious looking vegan pasta going on and we have three bowls. It's good to use odd numbers in photos. Um, it just is more visually appealing in design in general. And the lines in this photo are really, really great. So if you look at the three forks, they're all directing your eyes towards the center of the photo. The photo is also compositionally really strong because you have two pasta bowls on each of the third lines. And even the other props, like the glasses are symmetrical. There's one up here and one down here. You have your cheese grater, which is also pointing directly towards the center. The pasta looks great. The ingredients look nice and fresh. I can tell a lot of effort went into the styling of this. And I like how the um, artist included layers of paper. It just adds more depth and dimension to the circles. The only thing I would say about this photo is it's a tiny bit underexposed. I think you could raise your highlights just a little bit more and it would add some more like just life into the photo because right now I do think we're losing a little bit of detail on the pasta and the, the highlights of it just because the photo is a tiny, tiny bit dark. But I like the dark and moody aspect. I just think the highlights in general could be lifted just a tiny, tiny touch. All right, guys, so that is going to be all for my photo critiques this time. I think overall the main focus is, I would say, is for composition, make sure your photo is flat or it's either coming straight down or coming from a 45 degree angle. Make sure your lines are actually working for your photo and drawing your viewer's eyes to the subject material. And make sure your photo is properly exposed. You don't want any highlights too blown out. You don't want your shadows to be too, too dark. Um, but you do want to have some contrast between the highlights and the shadows. So yeah, I hope you guys appreciated this video. I had a good time. You guys are all really talented and now I'm really hungry and want to go eat a snack because all those food photos looked really yummy. And yes, okay, that is it. Have a great day. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.